Hey, what up, sluts? So I know I did a Would You Rather a few days ago, but I got a lot of you saying that you would prefer that I use the website instead of people asking questions, just because the questions are often uh, strangely specific or kind of nonsensical, and that's totally understandable, and that's why I asked you guys to give me feedback. So I figured since you guys enjoy these more, I may as well make one now. And uh, real quick, there are two links down below. Um, one of them goes to a Facebook page for a marketing group that I'm in, and that's part of my grade. And the other one uh, goes to the Twitter for that group, which is also part of my grade. And uh, I didn't want to just ask you guys to do something without any possible reward. Uh, so if I get to 2,000 likes on that Facebook page, uh, or rather if my group does, I really I don't even have access to the page. But uh, if I do, do get 2,000 likes on that, then I'm going to do an open lobby. And uh, for the Twitter account, I figure there are going to be way less people who follow that, like probably only 100 or so. So if you guys follow that, uh, in the next few days, I'm going to go through their list of followers and used a random number generator and uh, I'm going to pick three of you and we're going to all play some zombies. Uh, we'll play, pick whatever map you guys can play. Hopefully you guys will have uh, all the map packs so we can play Call of the Dead or something fun. But I figured that was a good way to incentivize you to go follow them on Twitter or whatever. And uh, if you're watching this video like a month from now, don't even bother. This is just for the end of the school year. So uh, by no means, it's not like you're going to be getting flooded in your Twitter account. But just know that uh, like the Facebook page, if it gets to 2,000, I'm going to do an open lobby. And if you follow them on Twitter, you have a chance, probably a much better chance than an actual open lobby, uh, of getting to play zombies with me. And that should be a lot of fun. So anyway, sorry for wasting your time up till now, but let's get on to the Would You Rathers. So, would you rather be able to kill anyone by writing their name in a notebook, or be able to heal anyone of any injury, illness, revive the dead via a kiss. And uh, for those of you who are always wondering, this is yourather.com. That's where I get all the questions. Um, man, this is a pretty difficult one. My, my sadistic side says that I'd rather be able to kill people by writing their name in a notebook. Like, I could just whip it out and be, like, right in the middle of a Republican debate and just be like, bang, 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 and they're dead. Like, all of them, you know, just finish it off. Uh, but the other part of me is, like, I want to be able to revive people from the dead, but I feel like I could only use that on family members. And, like, once my, like, if my mom died and she was, like, 85 years old, if I revived her... Like, I feel like if I were 85 and someone revived me, I would be like, what the hell, man? I was finally dead. Just let me rest. Like, I'm 85. Jesus Christ, give me a break. So uh, I'm going to go for killing people by writing their name in a notebook just because I could probably use that to rule the world. And uh, surely ruling the world is better than helping people, you know? That's just my opinion, though. So, all right. So 19% said be able to kill anyone in a notebook. So apparently 81% of you have a bigger heart than me, but only 19% of you realize the practicality or the implications of your decision. So... I mean, think about it. Are you really going to be reviving your 102-year-old grandmother? Once you revive her, she's going to slap you in the face and say, send me back. I'm done with this shit. Like, there's no way. Uh, so 81% are incorrect in that one. All right. Would you rather be a Muslim or be a Jew? Hmm. This is really difficult because living in the United States, especially where I grew up, you really don't have any exposure to Muslims whatsoever. None at all. I don't even think I met a Muslim until I came to college. Uh, so judging just by my very cursory and very vague understanding of Islam, I'd have to say Jewish, just because from what I know, it seems like Muslims take their religion much more seriously than Jews. Uh, all the Jews that I've met in my life, I don't think there's ever been one who actually really followed uh, the Torah or the Pentateuch or whatever they call it. Uh, so I'd rather be a Jew just because, you know, you could blend in a lot easier that way. Uh, Muslims get a lot of shit here in the U.S. People, they're really like one of the last groups here, aside from gay people, who it's still considered almost okay to look at them kind of wary-eyed and be like, oh yeah, Muslim, Middle Eastern, ooh, scary. Like, uh, and that's kind of bullshit, and I definitely wouldn't want to be subjected to that. So I'm going to go with Jewish, just because that would be an easier option here in the U.S. All right, 77% say Jewish, and I assume 23% who said Muslim uh, probably live somewhere where it's just as easy to be a Muslim, maybe in the Middle East, I don't know. Uh, I really don't know too much about Islam as a religion. So if you know a lot about Islam, leave it in the comment section, although not really sure if you'll want to. But anyway, next one. Would you rather rape someone, like it, and go to jail for a long time and regret it, or be raped? Um... Honestly, I'd rather be raped just because if I'm if I rape someone and go to jail, like that's a huge amount of time that I'm gonna be dedicated to just sitting there and feeling like a piece of shit. And I, I honestly don't think I could live with myself. Like I'd probably end up killing myself if I raped someone. Like that, that's just not something that I could continue on with my life. Like that's not like you know punching someone in the face at the bar. Like the next day you'll wake up and be like, yeah, that was dumb. I should probably apologize for that. But I mean, raping someone, it's like I just I don't know. I, I couldn't live with myself. Uh, but then again, being raped, that'd be crazy to be, you know, in that situation as well, especially as a man, because if we know anything about uh, rape victims, nobody gives a shit about a male rape victim. Males get raped all the time uh, in prison by other men, even by women sometimes. 
And nobody really cares here in the U.S. It's kind of just like, if anything, people will be like, oh, ha, 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 someone did you a favor and raped you. Like, that's, it's really, really messed up, but that's how it is here. Uh, but regardless, I guess I'd have to say be raped. Man, what a messed up problem. All right, 73% said be raped, and 27% said rape someone. Uh, I don't even know how to analyze that. Like, I, I, I guess it's understandable, because nobody wants to get raped, but at the same time, nobody wants to... What a shitty question, Andrew Kapinos, you bastard. Everyone gets this one wrong. We're all, we're all wrong. Next one. All right, would you rather watch Batman 1989 or watch The Dark Knight 2008? Oh, that's not even a question for me. I've seen Batman 1989. I used to watch that on TV when I was little. And although I like, I, th I think that's the one with the old Joker who had that purple suit. I like that Joker more uh, aesthetically than the one in The Dark Knight, despite the fact that Heath Ledger uh, does it much better than Anthony Hopkins. I'm pretty sure Anthony Hopkins, oh no, Jack Nicholson, I think, uh, was the old Joker, but that could have been an even earlier movie than that. I might be getting it mistaken, but regardless, doesn't even matter what other Batman movie it is, I'm going to go with The Dark Knight, just because Heath Ledger is, just, there are no words to articulate how well he plays that part, uh, and it's a damn shame that he's gone. Otherwise, we could have had some, some good Joker clips in the future. 80% said Dark Knight. Really? That, that's honestly lower than what I thought it would be. I figured everyone would say Dark Knight, but I guess you got a few uh, die-hard Batman 1989 fans uh, or people who are just like hipsters who are like, oh yeah, everyone's going to pick the Dark Knight. I'm going to pick old Batman because I'm just badass and awesome and I liked it before it was cool and blah, 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 blah. All right. Would you rather kill five innocent children yourself in it? if it would end all bloodshed in the Middle East for 25 years, or have ongoing wars, terrorism, and fighting in the Middle East? Um, I mean, from a personal level, I mean, it'd be much easier to just, say, allow all that shit to happen, but from an actual humanitarian level, it seems like it, the more moral thing to do would be to kill five kids and save thousands upon thousands upon thousands of other kids' lives who would otherwise be killed uh, later. But then that brings the whole implication of, like, you're still murdering them, but so does that justify the other people? And uh, I really don't know. This is difficult. I'm going to have to go with Kill Five Innocent Kids because just from the sheer utilitarian viewpoint, you're going to save a lot more lives that way. And I'm sure most people... Really? All right. 51% said they'd rather kill five innocent children, and 49% said they would not. That's interesting. Tell me what you guys think about that one, because I want to know. I, I think that the more moral decision would be to kill the five people and save the hundreds of thousands over the next 25 years. I mean, think about it. L look at a, a chart or some shit of the last 25 years and how many people have died in the Middle East. I guarantee you it's going to be bigger than five. I, I guarantee you it's going to be bigger than five. I don't know the actual number, but most likely in the hundreds and hundreds of thousands. Would you rather have $150 in quarters or $100 in paper money? Um, I would rather have $150 in quarters because that's more money, and anyone who chooses $100 in paper money is an idiot who is too lazy to go to the bank and get it exchanged, uh, and so, yeah, th th this, is, this shouldn't even be a question. Really? 68% of you said have $150 in quarters? That means that 32% of people are so lazy and so inept and so unwilling to do a tiny modicum of work, like hauling $150 worth of quarters to the bank, that they would rather just sacrifice 50 bucks. Really? You're that much of a lazy shithead? You can't go to the bank and just exchange some quarters? You piece of shit. You lazy bastard. Wow. You, you are awful. At least you just, you don't even need to keep the $50. You can give me the extra $50. I'll take it to the bank for you. You know, I'll do it. You know, I'll take care of the dirty work, you lazy asshole. All right. Would you rather be a sports star or be a celebrated academic? Um, I guess from the perspective of having an awesome life, I would rather be a sports star just because you get all the ladies and all the money and all the cool alcoholic beverages named after you and all that badass clothing lines and colognes and I could be in a commercial that doesn't really make any sense. It'll just be like me standing on a beach and then I'll turn around and be like, Mystique. And then it'll be like a bottle and it'll be like, Mystique by Taylor. $3,000. Like, that's exactly what it would be. Uh, but a celebrated academic, I feel like I would go down in history a lot more that way, because think about it. When you think about the last hundred years and think about the most influential people, you aren't thinking of famous sports stars from the 1950s or the 30s. You're thinking of people who actually made a difference. You're thinking of Einstein. You're thinking of celebrated academics. Uh, like, in a hundred years, Neil deGrasse Tyson, who right now is significantly less famous than, say, um, I don't know. I don't. Even, I, I can't even name a famous soccer player. How how sad is that? Or football player if you're not in the United States. So he's way less famous than someone like A. Rod. But 
in 100 years, I guarantee people are going to remember him a lot more than they remember A-Rod. Uh, because, you know, a sports star, you're just a flash in the pan. You're just a tiny little, uh, you burn brightly, but half as long, so to speak. Uh, so academic, I'm going to go with academic. All right, nice. That's way more people than I thought would actually pick academic. That's 58% academic, 42% sports star. Uh, that's pretty encouraging. You know, I, I thought this was going to be one of those questions where it was like 95% sports star, 5% academic. But uh, good for you, Internet. Two thumbs up on that one. We all get it right. That negates the rape question that we all got it wrong. I'm just going to give us 100% on this whole entire test. Uh, you didn't even know it was a test, did you? Uh, would you rather? This is the next one. Be extremely unattractive, or be extremely attractive, but have a hand that smells perpetually like poop. Oh, man. I mean, you, you got to go with the, the poopy hand. I mean, there's no other option. It's a known fact that people who are attractive get treated better in every way in society. Just look at the way uh, even a waiter treats a fat man compared to an attractive blonde woman. Just look at it. You don't even have to be like a sociologist taking rigorous notes on the process. It's easy to tell that it's much easier to be attractive than it's not. And uh, I figured I would do what they did for uh, in Zoolander. I would just get one of those glass things around my hand to, to keep the poop in there. And uh, anytime someone asked, I would just tell them that I had some sort of like crazy leprosy disease where if it broke, everyone around me would die. Uh, that would also come in handy in like bar fights and stuff. I could be like, hey, this whole hand is, like, gonna, gonna necrotize if I crack this glass open right on the bar, and you're all gonna die. And they'll be like, oh, shit, man, that sounds ridiculous, but I don't know enough to question it. So uh, I'm gonna go with uh, smell perpetually like poop. All right, 61% would rather be attractive but have a hand that smells like poop, and 39% of people are too dumb to realize the implications of their choice. All right, last one. Would you rather experience a level 10 on the Richter scale earthquake every week or have a two-foot flexible electric sex toy permanently implanted in your butt. Jesus Christ, like, I, I feel like the second one would kill me. Like, there's just not room for two feet of toy up in your body, or at least I don't think there are, unless there are some crazy video clips that I need to access online uh, in some dark corners of the Internet. But I'm going to have to go with experience a level 10 Richter scale earthquake every week just because the fact that it says experience, it means that I'm not dying. Like, at the very least, I could start a cool YouTube series where I learn how to skateboard during a Richter scale earthquake. And even if I don't get good at skateboarding, people are still going to want to watch as I'm, like, ollieing over, uh, you know, cracks and fault lines in the earth. It's going to be pretty badass. You guys should tune in. Uh, so I'm going to go with that one. All right, 72% said the Richter scale, and 28% apparently don't valuable or don't hold valuable any of their internal organs, which are surely going to be pushed aside and shocked into oblivion by this ridiculous electric sex toy. But, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that's all I've got to say for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, leave me a rating and check out those two links below if you want to play zombies or be in an open lobby, and I'll talk to you later. Oh yeah, and I love you.